I'm going to mount the, the head for the receive side on uh, the latch part of the gate and I have marked my holes right here on the plate that we're going to mount it to and then now then I'm going to drill it out and then that'll give me these uh, uh, screws that I can actually run through this hole right here and screw it to. So, and I've got some washers on the back that'll uh, help uh, keep it stable. And then I used my punch after I marked my holes, I used my punch to get a little divot in there. So I'm on center when I drill my holes. There she's mounted. And uh, just in case you didn't catch this, I put this particular fitting on there for a reason, as opposed to where the one where you take the conduit and twist it on. And the reason being is I'm not gonna be able to twist it without bending it and, and having it hard to, uh, to, um, to anchor down. So this one you can just push in and then you tighten it down without having to actually twist it on there. So that's what she looks like. As you can see, I just used two um, bolts, one on the bottom of one side and then one on the top of the other. And another thing that you may have noticed as well too is there's no circuit board in there and it's just a precautionary measure. Uh, take it out just so you don't scratch it, bent it, dent it, whatever, uh, to really ruin your day when you uh, damage one of those control boards. So now I can just uh, slip that in there. I blow this out first, get all this little debris from uh, drilling the hole out. I'll get all that debris out, blow it out, and then I'll put the circuit board in there and then I can put the cover on there uh, after I wire it up. Conduits ran up to the box, strapped on there. Unfortunately, I had to work with what I had here. They weren't sure whether this part of the fence was gonna stay. So I left enough slack for if it does stay, we're good. And if it doesn't, then then uh, you just be able to throw another strap on there. And that's how the bottom looks. Just was able to push it in there and we were good to go. Now I've got this excess wire here. I'll cut it off to probably, you know, about a good 12, 18 inches, strip it back or cut it to here, strip it back a couple inches and then pull the rip cord all the way down to the bottom. And that'll give me exposed two wires. You'll probably just use the black and red since it's power exposed two wires and then allow me to make that, uh, make that connection there. Um, and, uh, I'll go ahead and fill in the dirt back in this uh, hole right now. I left a couple of the, the two wires over there spare this orange and blue and I got the black and red tied into power. Now I'm just going to go ahead and mount the cover. And we'll start working on the transmitter side now or the master side, however you want to call it. But uh, I am not hooking up the shield on purpose. You want the shield to always tie to one common point. You want to remove excess energy, not add to it. And if you do grounds at two different, or in this case, a shield at two different points, you could uh, potentially create voltage as opposed to reduce voltage, which is what we're trying to do. Um, okay, I've got the, uh, the hole filled back in over there and the conduit turned out really clean. I'm not going to take a chance. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, anodized hood on and that'll help uh, block some of the sun from the uh, sensor. They make another cover that can go inside the sensor, but I don't think we're quite there yet. We're going to mount the, or actually already have mounted the, uh, the housing and the hood for the transmitter side, uh, what I'm going to call the master side of the um, safety photo eye. Um, the housing was pretty simple to mount. I just uh, took a, a, a long skinny drill bit and uh, just marked it um, just by squeezing the cordless drill gun a little bit uh, here and here. And then I just got a caddy corner and two are, are probably sufficient. I use these uh, number 10 or number eight rather self tappers, the Phillips head, uh, inch and a half long. I think an inch would probably got it done, but uh, I just needed, I wanted to make sure uh, because the uh, housing obviously stops somewhere back in here and uh, you just need a little bit of length. But uh, we'll mount strap here 
and then we'll mount a strap here that covers the coaxial cable for the um, long range antenna kit. That will be the uh, head side, the transmitter side, and then we just got a few more things, programming remotes and uh, testing the gate operator out, and that'll be it. The conduit's anchored down, and I have an 18-4 uh, direct burial wire pulled, and I have zip-tied the conduit down here to the bottom of the electrical, so we're not really worried about any interference. We just got power and a relay, so no data or anything that... Uh, could be corrupted by the electromagnetic field that the uh, 120 volts puts out. So we're not really worried about that. Um, behind it, right there, I'm not sure you can see it all, the well, all that well, but that is coming from the receive side down there. And the receive side is just going to have power, so it's just going to have two conductors. So you can see that uh, this one's not that long, but this wire that's coming out for the uh, transmit side just keeps going and going and going and uh, I left it long because I actually have to get up there so I have to get all the way up there with one pair of wires and then I'm only going to the outlet with another pair so uh, that's why it's a little bit longer but we'll cut off what we don't need and um, and that's it so you can see what I was talking about earlier when the hole that uh, has the coaxial cable that's uh, uh, drilled down here at the bottom is going to be covered by the conduit so that's what I was talking about so yeah it's a pretty big hole and you need that in order to uh, get the uh, actual uh, F connector through there but uh, it's now covered so you know when you're standing six feet away you're not going to be able to notice it and then we've got our conduit nice and straight there ready to go so now we'll uh, uh, strip this wire back and we'll make uh, uh, some bare copper exposed here and then we'll put the uh, the actual uh, printed circuit board in here and then we'll make our connections here in the uh, housing. So we're going to do a power power transformer here and I believe I have 24 volt AC power transformer. We're hooking this up what EMX calls configuration zero. So it's a normally closed relay and uh, I believe they recommend 24 volts AC for that. So I've got my transformer here, and then we'll wire normally closed and common up here in the circuit board. The wire's been prepped. This uh, orange and blue is going to go up to the control housing, so it'll get fed up through a series of these holes right here and go up through the control housing. Uh, the red and black is going to be for our power, so it's going to go right here to the transformer. And then you can see I've got these stripped back stripped back and they're going to go in uh, in the bottom of the receiver uh, where the or transmitter where the uh, uh, terminal connectors are so they're prepped and ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and mount them to the circuit board and then I'm gonna pull the excess wire from here down and then it'll seat just right when I get, when it gets down in there it'll seat just perfectly I may have to loosen up this uh, strap right here in order to do it comfortably I don't want to pull on the wire too hard because I, I may get to a, a smooth spot and then while I'm pulling on the wire it pulls and possibly damages the circuit board so we don't want to do that transformer has the wires connected to it now I use these blue spade uh, well, I guess they're ring uh, solderless terminal connector, and I took both wires and spun them together, uh, twisted them together, and put the, inserted them, and then crimped them with the proper crimper. So uh, the the thing about these, when you use these, and you're going to use more than one wire, twist the wires together because it creates a cross section that adds resistance to the connector, and it makes it a lot tougher to. Uh, to pull out of the actual connector, even even if it's not crimped properly, it uh, adds resistance to it. So uh, the second thing is, is you can see that it has this center lug, so you can actually screw it into this duplex outlet. Um, you just put the cover on first, and then screw it in. And you can see that I've got the wire connected to the circuit board. This is one way to do it. It makes it a little bit easier if you take the circuit board out and then wire it and then put it back in. So we'll pull the excess wire out and then get it to where it's kind of close in there and then we'll screw it in there. Made a little mistake when I went to wire up the photo eye. I wired it to uh, safety and that was great for the safety but it doesn't solve the new UL325 
uh, connections that they actually have on the board. So uh, I'll show you here in a second, but we'll just start from here what I had to do. Um, I had to take the power off of this AC transformer and connect it to now an extension that goes up to the top through this hole and then through here over here to the monitored 24 volt so uh, the, the now the transmitter if you will I'm calling transmitter master however you want to call it uh, the the side with the relay on it is now being powered off of this 24 volt and not 24 volt DC and not this 24 volt AC down here and um, what I forgot was what the uh, control board does is actually flashes power um, on this uh, common and 24 volts and looks for a change of state in the relay. If the relay does not change state, then it knows that it's not being powered directly through this and it'll sense a fault. If it does change state, then it knows that it's giving power, taking away power, and then giving power back again and it'll see the change in the state of the relay. So in this case, um, I had it wired to safety and had it powered off of something else, not thinking about the UL325 at all, then I realized, oh crud, I gotta get uh, over to the um, monitor close because I was showing a monitor close fault. So, uh, connecting that power now and, and, and making a jumper uh, from down here where the wires were connected to uh, up here where it's going to be powered, where it is powered now because the gate operator is working, I took these uh, B connectors and this is a insulation displacement connector and what it does is it uh, uh, allows you to put wires in it without stripping it even though you see I've stripped it here strip it and then it has little teeth in there and those little teeth displace the insulation that's why they call it an insulation displacement connector and uh, they puncture the insulation or the dielectric right here and, and then uh, that allows the two conductors, because they're both being placed in the same con uh, uh, connector, allows them to be electrically the same. So I left these like this just so you could see. Well, one, I've modified this uh, B connector to where I've cut the bottom off just a little bit. That way I can get two heavier gauge wires in there. I stripped the wires back, twisted them together, and then I put the uh, 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 B connector on there, and then I crimped it from top down to the bottom. That way the gel, oh that's one thing I didn't mention, is it has gel in there. Um, a lot of people would say well it has silicone in there. It could be silicone, but a lot of silicone contains ammonia and ammonia will uh, oxidize copper. So uh, it's, it's most likely not a silicone, even though it could be, but they call it a gel, so I would imagine that it's not. So that's the stages of it. We strip the wire back, we expose the conductors, and then we twist them together, and then we put the uh, B connector on there and then crimp it together. Uh, it makes, a, in my opinion, a better connection by doing this, but it does add a step which is what insulation detector displacement connectors are supposed to do. It's supposed to take away that step, but we do it so we can have a, a better joint and uh, more resistance on there if the wire gets pulled and, and tries to come out of the connector. Uh, so we had a couple more remotes to program. We programmed those. I'm gonna go ahead and make this connection right here, and then we're gonna run the gate open and close.